Hi, everyone, and welcome to this chapter of the free full stack course. In this chapter, we're going to install Postgres on Mac OS. Now, we're going to talk more about what Postgres is, but the installation process is kind of different from Mac OS to Linux and from Linux to Windows. Um, most importantly, Postgres uses a system of authentication that is, for instance, not available as of yet on Windows. So I've decided to create three separate videos for the free full stack course so that we cover the majority of the cases for people watching this course. First, we'll talk about Mac OS, then Linux and Windows. So let's quickly just talk about what Postgres is. is as Postgres itself puts it, it's the world's most advanced relational database. And it's also open source. So um, it is a little bit different from other um, databases that you may have used before, like MySQL. Uh, it has its own commands, which we will also get to know to in the coming chapters. Uh, so it is important that we first focus on the proper installation of Postgres so that it works exactly the same way on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And then we'll, in the later chapters, we'll focus on actually working with Postgres. So in order to install Postgres on Mac OS, you'll need Homebrew. Uh, we've talked about homebrew in one of the uh, early chapters of the free full stack course. So I encourage you to go ahead and watch the chapters chronologically instead of jumping over them. And also you're welcome to stay in this chapter, uh, even if you've come from an outside source, for instance, if you're not interested in the free full stack course, but you just wanna be able to install um, Postgres on Mac OS, you're also more than welcome to do that, but you also need to have Homebrew installed already on your computer. And the installation process of Homebrew isn't that complicated. If you just Google it, you'll get to the solution quite easily for Mac OS. So the way we need to install uh, Postgres on Mac OS with Homebrew is very simple. As you can see, we just write brew install Postgres SQL. So if I bring up iTerm in here, let's see, I'll bring up the window. I'll do some reshuffling here so you see my screen better. And let's go in here. And then what you need to type in here, as you can see at the bottom of the screen is brew installed. Let's see where it went. Brew install Postgres SQL. Okay, so this is the formula that we're gonna use. And it's also available. I mean, if you just go to brew.sh, which is their website for homebrew, uh, you can find this formula. If you just type, po uh, if you just type Postgres SQL, you'll find it. So I've already installed Postgres, so I don't have to issue this command. So I believe if I issue this command, I'll actually either get Postgres SQL upgraded or, or it will just tell me that there is nothing to do. So I can see in here, it says basically Postgres is already installed and I can try to reinstall it if I want to. So for those of you who haven't installed Postgres from before, all you need to do is just to issue this command in your terminal in order to install Postgres, okay? Now, when you create, um, when you install Postgres SQL with uh, Homebrew, then it becomes a service that you can start and stop. And I'm not 100% sure actually if the service starts automatically upon installation. So if that is not the case, then you might need to start the service manually. So the way to do that is you type brew and services start Postgres SQL. So you say brew services. And if I bring this up a little bit so the caption doesn't block it, brew services start uh, Postgres SQL, okay, uh, like this. And then you can also use now in here it says already started. So if it's already started for you, you'll also get some message similar to this. Or you could say brew services stop Postgres SQL. Let's see, uh, like this. Uh, and also you can restart this service. So I can now start it because I've already stopped that. You can now see Postgres SQL has started. Okay, so you can use the start, stop, and restart commands with brew in order to yeah basically do do those commands with the uh, associated service. Okay, now one thing that's quite important to understand about Postgres as a relation uh, relational data uh, database is that it uses a system called ident and how this really works, um, from what I've understood at least, is that on Linux and Mac OS or Unix-based operating systems, what it does is it uses the current user that is logged into the computer as the user that is then going to log into the database. And also it looks for a database 
with the current user's name. So if you, for instance, have uh, your username as foo, and then you want to log into Postgres and interact with your databases, it will say, okay, you're the user foo, and I'm going to log you in with that specific role uh, of role named foo. And I'm also going to look for a database called foo. So this causes some confusion sometimes because if you, for instance, then create a new user in your um, Mac OS or Linux or yeah, actually Mac OS and Linux only because Ident is only supported on Unix based operating systems. If you create a new user and then you try to then log into Postgres, you may actually get some errors saying that, well, I can't find a database under your name or I can't find a role named XYZ where XYZ is your username. So what is very important then is that in this chapter, we create a, an actual user on our Mac OS instance. And then using that user, we will set up Postgres. So that's what we're going to do. And we're also going to create a database onto that user. Okay. So what we're going to do now, uh, we're going to create a new, new user, and then there is going to be a database under that uh, user's uh, name. So what I think you need to do now is to go ahead in your system preferences and create a whole new user as an admin and please call that full stack course. And this user doesn't necessarily have to be called full stack course, but it is paramount. I mean, it's very important actually that this user be called this at the moment so that the instructions that I'll provide in the upcoming chapters are not going to be too complicated uh, for all, all of the people watching this course. Because if you go ahead and call your database X and someone else goes and calls the database Y, and then in my instructions, I say, oh, later when we go and develop the backend, I say, oh, put this string of a Z in here. And you'd be like, what is Z? Then you have to remember that you actually didn't call your um, user Z, but you called it X and someone else called it Y. So I think if we all call the database and the user the same thing during this course, our life and <laughs> my life will be a lot easier. So let's go ahead and create a new user in system preferences on Mac OS and call it full stack course. So if I open up system preferences and bring it up here, you'll see that I can go to users and groups. And then I have created a whole new user available in here. As you can see, it is called full stack course. And this user is an admin. All right. And if you want to also to do, if you want to do that, all you need to do is just to click on this um, lock at the bottom of the screen to unlock the screen, uh, to unlock the system preferences, enter your password, then press this plus button right here. If you press the plus button, then you can say, okay, I want an administrator account right here and please call it full stack course. Okay. Uh, and the account name should be the same thing. Um, then the password is up to you, what you're going to do. So that's completely up to you. For my user, I've called the user full stack course. And I think I've also called the password, the same thing, full stack course, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So please go ahead and do that and create that admin account now. I can't do that myself because I've already created one, but the process of creating an admin account in macOS is very, very straightforward, okay? Actually, in Linux, is more straightforward as, as we'll later see, but um, for now, we can say that it's all uh, through the UI. So it's very easy to create a user in macOS as well. Great stuff. After we've done that, so let's say now that we have a user uh, in in uh, system preferences called uh, full stack course. What we need to do is to go ahead and create a whole new user as well for Postgres. And when we install Postgres with Homebrew, there are a few binaries that Homebrew adds to our path using which we can interact then with Postgres. Two of those commands, or actually, let's just first talk about the first command. The first command is called create user. So if I in here say which create user, you'll see that it is in homebrew bin and then create user, okay? So this create user is very important because it allows us to create a user and a specific role for the given user in Postgres. So what you need to do in here is to go ahead and say create user 
and then dash dash interactive. Okay. And it will say, okay, enter name of the role to add. And I say full stack course, for instance. Okay. And then it will say, should it be a super user? Then I say, yes. Okay. And I get a, an error in here because, well, I've already created this user before, so I don't have to create it again. But all you need to do is just to go to terminal and say, create user dash dash interactive. For the name of the user, also say full stack course. And then also in here say that it should be a super user. The next step, which we can't see in here, is a step that it asks for a password for that user. Then you will also enter the password of your choosing. I've chosen full stack course, both for the username and the password, which is not a good practice uh, in real life, but to make, make our lives easier for this course, at least we're using the full stack course as both username and password. Okay. So after you've done this, you've now created also a user in um, Postgres. So the first thing that we did in system preferences was to create a user in Mac OS. And then this step creates a user in Postgres. And by doing that, then it will be very easy for us to log in to the Mac OS user in terminal using sudo. And then from that account, log into Postgres using the same username because we've created it with create user and it creates the role for that user as well. It's a little bit strange, but all you have to think about is that you have a user on Mac OS and you have a user on Postgres. And these two, if they match, if the name matches, your life will be a lot easier because that's what Postgres tries to do. It tries to log you into Postgres using the current Mac user. Okay. And the name of this Mac user has to match a specific user also in Postgres's database itself. Okay. So after you've done this, you also have to be aware of something else that Postgres does, which is a little bit strange is when you try to log into Postgres, it, with a user called Foo, for instance, what it always tries to do is to connect you also with a, with a database under the same username. So if your username is Foo and you try to log into Postgres, it will say, okay, here's a user called Foo. I'm going to log you into, the date, into Postgres and I'm going to connect you with a database that has the same name as your username, in this case, Foo. And in that case, if you don't have this database called Foo, you will actually get an error saying that, oh, I can't connect with Postgres because this database doesn't exist. So what we're going to do now is to go ahead and not only have we created the user, but we also have to create a database under the same name for that user. Okay. So the way to do that is with a command in terminal call, called create db. And this is one of the commands that Brew has already installed for us. So if you say which create db, you'll see that it is placed in here and create DB is one of the Postgres commands. Okay. So let's say create DB in here. And as you can see at the bottom of the screen, we're going to call it full stack course. Okay. And you can see I'm getting an error because that database already exists. So I can't recreate it, but for you who hasn't done this before, if you just issue this create DB command, then you are going to be able to create it successfully. Okay. So, after doing that, now we have the Mac OS user. We also have, uh, we also have a user enroll in Postgres, and we have a database under that user. What we need to do is to actually test out our Postgres installation. So just ensure that also Postgres is a service that is started. So brew services start. Okay, services start Postgres SQL. Ensure that. Uh, Postgres is running. And after that, what we're going to do is to sudo i and then with a u of full stack course. So what this does is it logs us in the terminal into the full stack course Mac user. Remember, we created an admin user. Okay. So I'm going to do that. And uh, password, I think, is also full stack course. Actually, it isn't. Uh, I may have to change the password then. Yes, I can see that was the password actually. So um, let me go into system preferences and go ahead in users into the full stack course and actually change the password so that it is also full stack course. So let's say reset password and I'm gonna say full stack course. Okay, and change the password. I hope that this doesn't cause too much issues with a keychain at least. All right, so let's issue the same command, sudo iu full stack course. And 
I'm actually sudoed already. So let me go into iTerm and open it one more time in here. Increase the size by quite a bit. Okay. And issue the same command and then say full stack course. Oops. Full stack course. Oops. Did I not reset it? Incorrect password again. Um, I don't know if I actually reset it correctly then, but that's that's okay. I mean, I can't change that actually later, but let's just go ahead and assume that the, the password is actually full stack course, though it probably isn't on my computer yet. I have to reset the password later, but it's not relevant to this section of this chapter anyway. So after issuing this command, you can see now your user is actually full stack course at your computer. So I'm now logged in as a super user into this user on Mac OS. We haven't logged into Postgres yet, okay? So uh, the way that you need to log into Postgres is with a command called PSQL, so as in Postgres SQL. So if you issue this command, you will see you have you will enter uh, Postgres without a problem if you've followed all the um, instructions in this chapter. Because what happened right here is we logged into Postgres with the current user and then with the current Mac user, and then Postgres was like, okay, does this user also exist in Postgres? And yes, it does, because we created that user using the create user command before. What it does then is says, okay, this user exists, but does, does it have a database under the same name? Yes, it does, because we created a DB using the create DB command, remember? So if these three things match, and then you will have no problem logging into Postgres, all right? Now, we're not gonna go into the details of Postgres right now, but what we are gonna do is just to test our connection. And the connection is basically like information about, yeah, which database we're connected to right now with which user, okay? And the way to do that in, in PSQL or Postgres is using a backslash C um, command, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so if you if you issue this command, you, you'll see that it says I'm connected to the full stack course database as this particular user. Though we didn't actually specify which database to connect to, but if you remember, Postgres does that automatically. It tries to connect you with a database under the same name that you're trying to log in or under the same role that you're trying to log into uh, Postgres. So. Um, if you get this command telling you that you've connected to the database of full stack course as user full stack course, then you followed all the instructions correctly without a problem. And you've pretty much then set up um, PSQL or Postgres SQL on uh, Mac OS without a problem. So congratulations to you. And to get out of this prompt actually in uh, Postgres, you can issue the command backslash Q and you've now quit. And then you can exit from your uh, super user uh, login in terminal and you're back to your user. So who am I? Then you're back into the user that you had when you started terminal. So uh, congratulations. That was um, that was a lot of work, but um, I think I think we managed it without without a problem. Now, if you have any questions, if things didn't work out for you as well as they worked out here, please let me know in the comments at the bottom of this video. And me and the community will surely be more than glad to help you out. Uh, thank you for sticking with me in the, uh, through this chapter, and I'll see you in the next one.